Hello, welcome. Anderson's TV right here. My name is Jack and I'm here with the lovely... Sebastian. Ah, oh, Sebastian, thank you, mate. <laughs> Sebastian, I met last year as well. Very knowledgeable guy. Now, I have no idea what this is. We've walked over to your booth and I'm very excited. What is it? I, I don't know, man. <laughs> look, look, it looks video nice. done. It looks nice. It's got, it's got knobs. Yeah. Come yeah. have a look, come have a look. Oh, yes, yeah, it looks like a synthesizer. No, it's a, it's, um, it's a synthesizer. It's the Micro Freak. Uh, we're just announcing it at NIME 2019. It's got a digital oscillator and an analog filter. So it's a new approach for us. We come from the Brute brand, which was more like a fully analog synthesizer. And this one, we bring some digital sound generation in it. So different type of approach. The cool thing is you get many modes of synthesis on this oscillator that you can choose from. So there are four knobs on the oscillator. The type knob lets you navigate through a list of the different modes. And then once I choose one, I can I have three controls over each mode uh, to, to do synthesis. So you get like, you know, harmonics, kind of additive sounds. Carpet Strong is uh, physical modeling. I'll let you hear some of these sounds afterward. Yeah. VA is some yeah virtual analog, of, like two waveforms and virtual analog. So all of these modes can navigate through them. Some of them are, we did in-house and some of them are use the same code as the Mutable Instruments uh, Plate Eurorack module, for those who know it. Um, it's, it's a great sounding module and it uses the same kind of paradigm with a, a mode, a mode it, it's got more features a, a, on its own but it's like mode control and then three knobs to interact with the timber of the oscillator. So same thing here, analog filter, it's a 12 dB filter, sounds great, it's um, kind of a liquid filter, very clean, um, unlike the Brute uh, Steiner Parker who's more of a character filter which sounds great as well but this one leaves more room for the oscillator to really speak because it's uh, it, well it cuts less being 12 dB well, the other one is 12 dB also but it doesn't have this you know I won't say aggressiveness but character that you get with the Steiner Parker filter. Uh, uh, sorry to jump in how many voices would this kick out? So it's a it's a monophonic synth so it's got only one filter but you can do paraphony yeah. you have up to four voices of a paraphony. Most modes use four voices one of them has only three because of the CPU inside being a max but um, yeah, you get four voices. And one thing we also use, we use this trick on the Matrix Brook Paraphony and here as well is we have volume control before the filter. Usually the VCA is after the filter. And on this one, we have volume control in Paraphony, volume control before the filter so that each node can have its own volume envelope. Wow. Um, which sounds nice. Normally, Paraphony sends to just like on off for each node. And, um, it's nice to do pads. You still have only one filter, so the envelope is That's why that 12 dB navigate. slope kind of eludes to yeah. pad type sound. Yeah, I'm interested. Exactly. Again, stick with us. We're going to plug it in and hear some audio yeah, yeah. in just a minute. Right? So, moving on, the, 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 the real, let's say, unusual feature of this instrument is really the oscillator and the keyboard. The, the rest, like this is a cycling envelope, so you can do either ADSR or attack, hold, release, and loop, uh, looping um, uh, envelope. You get shape control between exponential and linear and uh, uh, logarithmic, uh, continuous. Yep. Classic ADSR envelope, LFO with tempo sync. Ma modulation matrix right here, so something we already used on the matrix brute with buttons. We kept the same geometrical layout of displaying all the sources and destinations graphically. But this time you navigate with a knob to select a, a routing, the source destination, click, and then you can set the amount, click again, you can navigate, click, set the amount. So you just you know, some quick and easy way to set the modulations. And the bottom here, it's... Um, it looks incredible. It, it's, it's quite different, I, I like it. It's a um, PCB, so printed circuit board, keybed, so touch plate. And it's got uh, velocity and aftertouch sensitivity. So you choose for each pad between velocity and aftertouch. Uh, so um, I'll let you hear afterwards, but you can get you can get some pretty expressive control uh, by tapping uh, softer or louder. Uh, arpeggiator and sequencer. So good a good mix between some classic features and some more unusual. The arpeggiator gives some. Classic up uh, order random uh, the mode. Mm -hmm. You can have go one or up to four octaves, and you get a pattern mode as well. Where, when when selected, I'm gonna play a few notes, and it will generate a random sequence of uh, of notes. Yeah. I can set the length, like let's say 16 step. I press four notes, and it's gonna generate a sequence using those notes randomly, but it's gonna loop. 
So it's kind of your, yeah. you know, just pattern generator where I say I, I want to play A minor, just play the three uh, three notes, and it's going to generate a sequence. And if I don't like it, I press again three notes, and it's going to do a new sequence with the same notes. So oh, just right. a quick and dirty way to generate some sequence, and you know, just press hold, press the three notes, and just get come going. have a look at this, Chris. Uh, some of this, uh, I love it. Spice, dice, bend. This is, what's this? Is, yeah. is uh, mod modulation so strip? So this is, uh, in band mode, it's just a pitch band control, kind of yeah. a ribbon control. And spice and dice are for the arpeggiator mode, where usually with an arpeggiator, it just gets like tack, 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 some yeah. notes playing over the same length. Spice and dice uh, do some randomization on the gate, um, the gate length. Yeah. So it can go from just a regular 50% gate all the way to some silence notes, just so short that they get cut. and or they get big enough so that they tie. So they, the, the length kind it. of evil. And uh, the way it works is spice is just a, a global amount of randomness. When spice is at zero, it's just like a classic arpeggiator sequence. And at maximum, it there are more uh, random sounds. And dice is a way to reshuffle the sequence. So sometimes like a step is gonna be a, you know, a silence, and then it, if I reach off, it's going to play back or stuff oh, like that. Oh, and it's yeah. so well, and a great little screen on here, Chris, again, yeah. sorry, mate. Small and uh, display. Grand yeah. Folly. <laughs> Grand Folly, a, a touch of madness. A touch it, of madness. You know, it's it kind of, all this communication, and uh, even the name, the freak name, came from really messing around with this instrument, and all these unusual features of, you know, selecting a mode, and you don't really know what's going to happen, wow. just tweak some knob. The random the sequence, screen is the so cool. Pattern. So we're going to plug it and have a listen to yeah, it. Sure. Uh, so, just one last thing: who, who do you see buying this? Oh, um, so as I uh, said, what's your collection like? If, where does this fit into you? Yeah, I'd say I'd say there is a good mix of some classic synthesizer uh, features and some more experimental features. So for people who want to get into synthesis, the good thing is that. You're gonna have a filter, envelope on the filter, and the VCA, LFO, sequencer, all of these, you know, you kind of get to grips rather quickly if you're beginning. And you also get room for experimentation with the oscillator and all the modes, with the step sequencer. The sequencer can also do some parameter automation. So I think it's a very nice synth to begin with if you want to get into you know all the different modes yeah. of synthesis. And for expert, it's a it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's like a, a, a modular in a box, it's not true, but it, some of the features, like all the random get generation, the, the multi-mode oscillator, are quite inspired by what you would see in the Eurorack world these days. So, yeah. It seems really unique, man. We're going to plug it in and have yeah. a listen to it. Um, any idea how much it's going to be or yeah. when we're going to see it? Yeah, it's, it's going to be available between March and May in stores. And the price is going to be 299 euros, 299 dollars. I don't know the price in pounds. That's great. But, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens with Brexit, mate. <laughs> All the best. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank <laughs> you.